Hi and welcome. It's Monday. Um, so we're pushing on with some Key Stage 2, Key Stage 3 PE. Um, we're moving on today. Yep, it's lovely. Just checking the sound was working. So we did a whole series of um, bat and ball uh, lessons building on to sort of tennis, badminton type, type games. We're going to start a little series now uh, of uh, striking and fielding practices and skills. So these are all skills that would develop uh, into games like rounders and cricket or baseball, softball, things like that. But essentially sports where we're batting, bowling and fielding. So we're going to have a little look each week at some of those different skills. Try and come up with some little games that you could play even though you're on your own or with uh, one person to work with you if you've got your, your mum or dad or brother to practice with. So we're looking today at some fielding skills and we're going to look at uh, catching and throwing and some little throwing and catching practices that we can do to improve those. So all you need for today is a ball. Hopefully you got the message I sent out earlier. If not, while we're doing the warm up, maybe mum or dad could scuttle away and see if they can find a ball of any sort, tennis ball or similar. If you don't have a tennis ball, some rolled up socks will work just fine because we're not bouncing or rolling the ball today at all. It's going to be in the air all the time. So you just need a ball. If you're not watching this live, please press pause, go away and find a small tennis type ball for this lesson. OK, but we're going to get going first of all with a little bit of a warm up. So whatever space you're using, we're just going to start walking around in that space. Don't know how long you've been sat down for today, but just to start, get you moving around nice and gently, in and out of the area. Try not to just go round in a circle. If you're doing this with a couple of children, mums and dads joining in, just mind you don't bump into each other. Just moving around the area without touching anyone, without bashing into anything, just to get us loosened up and starting to move. And we'll just build it up now into a little bit of a jog. Anywhere you want around your area. Try and keep changing direction rather than going round in a circle. And we can go backwards. Just check over your shoulder where you're going. And we can go sideways. So we're just getting some little side steps going and change direction so the other foot is leading and change direction so the other foot is leading and we'll get a little bit of skipping going gradually build up some intensity and hopping on one leg and hopping on the other leg and bouncing on both feet And a normal jog again. Mike fell off. And let's just see if we can just flick our bums with our heels. And some high knees. And if you've got your ball to hand, when I'm going to be jogging around our area with the ball in our hands, and when I say down, we'll put the ball on the floor. And when I say up, I'm going to pick the ball up again. So, it's down. Up. Down. Up, back to your ball, down, up, and we're going to put it down with our left hand and pick it up with our right hand. So I've got my left hand, fits down, and up. We're going to keep alternating those hands. So it's in my right hand now, it's down, so I'm going to pick it up with my left hand, up. Try and get a big long stretch when you go down. So open up those legs to go down for the ball rather than just stopping still and just 
bending at the waist. So it's my left hand at the moment, it's down. Up. And down. And up. Well done, hopefully you're just getting a little bit warmer. You might want to take a jumper off. You feel like you're starting to huff and puff just a little bit. And we're just gonna get our eyes in a little bit with some just two-handed little catches. Eyes on the ball, soft hands, cradle the ball. Two things we're gonna really focus on today learning-wise is to cradle the ball so as it comes into our hands, we give and we just cradle it down rather than just having the ball hitting our hands and our hands are still. So cradling the ball is gonna be really important today. And also thinking about whether our fingers are pointing down or whether our fingers are pointing up, but our fingers are never pointing at to the ball, okay? The ball should never be coming towards our fingertips. Our fingers should always be pointing down towards the worms or up towards the sky. Always down or up. So, little catches. That's too easy. Can you throw it a little bit higher? If that's too easy, can you do a clap and then catch the ball? How many times can you clap your hands and still catch the ball? Three. Oh! Oh! There's one ball lost. <laughs> Josh, could you grab me another tennis type ball or one of these? They're in the uh, garage, bottom right. Try not to do this where you're facing direct into the sunshine. We'll try not to put too many balls into the neighbour's gardens. Okay, can you throw the ball up and do just a little quarter turn and then catch the ball? So I'm going to see if I can get the whole way round in four, turn, four throws. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Excellent, can you go the other way round? Thank you. One, two, three, four. Oh gosh, it's really hard with the sun, sun in your eyes. Can we go from one hand to the other hand? From left to right. Too easy, can you go a little bit higher? Can you do it just with one hand? You do it just with the other hand. Okay, lovely, we've got our eyes in, we're ready to go, so I'm gonna need a partner now. So Josh, if you wanna come up just over there, that is great. We're just gonna do some dealing with a ball that's coming towards you through the air, okay? Anything that comes below waist height. So we're gonna start nice and easy. If you come a little bit further across, Josh, that's fine. So I'm just gonna be here, fingers down, and I'm just looking for a throw into my hands here, okay? And we're just going to get that going between the two of us. You can see I've got my knees bent, so I'm ready to move. I could move left or right if I needed to. And each time it comes to me, my fingers are down, and you can see that I'm cradling the ball. So I'm just going to really emphasise that as the ball comes into my hands, my hands are pulling back each time. That's lovely. And Josh is making it really nice and easy for me at the moment because they're coming straight towards me. So if you're doing this absolutely fine and not dropping the ball, we can start to make it a little bit harder. So number one, we can just start to move your partner to the left slightly or to the right side, just so they have to move their hands, not necessarily their feet, but just so it's going from side to side. But just to emphasise again, look at my hands, they're pointing down. We don't want our fingers pointing at the ball and trying to catch it like a crab. You get hit on the end of the fingers by the ball and we have children then permanently afraid of catching a ball. Okay, so it's flat hand, fingers pointing down. Ready, Josh? So Josh is gonna start moving me around my hands just a little bit to the left and right. And I'm still pointing my fingers down. And can you see the cradling? I don't really need to do it for this ball because it's quite nice and soft. But if this was a cricket ball or a rounders ball or a baseball coming towards me hard, and if I didn't cradle it, it would really sting my hand 
and I might drop it. Wonderful. What else can we do to make this harder, Josh? Move closer, further away. So we could, if you're finding that too easy, we can move a little bit further away. It means you've got to throw the ball a little bit harder. I might have to move if it's a bit short or a bit long. We can also make this a bit more competitive. We can see how many we can do without dropping the ball. And we're doing really well at the moment. I appreciate if you're like a year four, year five, you might not be getting as many catches in as we are. Okay, so we can go further away. We can also try and throw it a little bit quicker. So we could set a watch and say, right, we're going to see how many we can do in 20 seconds. Uh, we'll have a go, shall we? You count, I'll count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm just counting the balls. It's really hard to not count in time with the balls being thrown. Oh, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, 13 Mississippi, 14 Mississippi, 15 Mississippi, 16 Mississippi, 17 Mississippi, 18 Mississippi, 19 Mississippi, 20 Mississippi. How did we get? <laughs> About 20. Uh, it's really hard not to just count the, the throw of the balls rather than seconds, but you grab a stopwatch out or someone's got a timer on their phone, you can get someone to time you, see how many you could do, and then see if you can beat your record. Another way we can make this much harder is to have two balls. So, this is going to take a bit of coordination, Josh. You ready? We'll start by helping each other out with a bit of timing. So we're going to do one, two, three, pass. One, two, three, pass. Okay, ready? One, two, three, pass. One, two, three, pass. And once we get... <laughs> that was a bit short. <laughs> once we get into a bit of a rhythm... Oh, <laughs> a little bit further, Josh. <laughs> I'm going to have to... I don't have to move my feet. That would be horrendous. And we can get into a little bit of rhythm. And even I can sort of, I can move into a, oh, oh dear. You can get into a little bit of a, catch it to your left, move it to your right, throw it. You can get into a little bit of a pattern. And you might have to think about, are you going to get the balls to go over and under each other? Or are you going to pass them left and right? What you don't want is the balls hissing each other in the middle. Okay, if you've got two balls, we'll have one more go at that. So give us one, Josh, you ready? Okay, just go away from the edge. I don't want you to topple back off the edge of the... Ready? Here we go. One. Oh! Start, oh. <laughs> Start again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Oh, that was me. Bad pass from me. Hit him in the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> Nearly hit each other. Fourteen. 15. Well done. Excellent. So that little practice is great uh, to have a go at. Hi, Paul. Hi, Hayley. OK, so there's dealing with a ball that's coming towards you. And you can still catch a ball like that. You can just bring them up a little bit higher, Josh. Even, even up here, I can still catch the ball and have my fingers pointing downwards. There will become a point, you just go a little bit higher each time, there will become a point where <laughs> around here, where it becomes really uncomfortable to try and catch it here, and it's very difficult to cradle the ball. So anything above this sort of height, you're going to have to change technique, and we go from fingers pointing down to fingers pointing up. So what I want from you now, Josh, is to be sort of dropping it uh, higher than that, sort of dropping it head height. That's it, lovely. So try and drop it. That was too short on my head. Brilliant. That's it. So you're seeing if you can, if you imagine that Josh is in a dustbin, and I'm trying to land this in the dustbin that he stood in. So you're trying to pop it onto your child's head. So hands are up, fingers are pointing upwards, and we get like a triangle in between our hands, and I can look at the ball through that triangle. Make sure the triangle's not bigger than the ball, otherwise the ball will just come straight through that gap and hit you on the forehead. 
but I'm looking at the ball through the triangle and as it comes down I'm going to still cradle it but I can either bring it down over my right shoulder or I can bring it down over my left shoulder. So let's have a look at a few more of those. Looking at the ball over my right shoulder. Look at the ball over my left shoulder. Josh is giving me much more accurate passes than I'm managing. And even though this is a soft ball, I can get away. I wouldn't really need to cradle this, not, not with it coming at this speed, but I'm still good practice just to cradle everyone. If it's a bit short, you've got to go back to your fingers down and you can just cradle it down here. And the thing is, this, if this was a cricket ball and it's been absolutely smacked and you're out on the boundary, it's going to be coming down from quite a height. It's quite scary for some catchers, so it's really worth investing time now in this technique. Come a little bit further forward, I'm worried about putting you over the edge. There. Oh, and I just got the sun in my eyes there, I had it lined up. There it goes. And again, if it's short, you've just got to go back to, to fingers down. Like most of mine to you have been, Josh. And give them some off one shoulder. I'm, I'm much more comfortable taking it over my right. Sorry, that's again not, not far enough. So give them some they've got to take over the left, some they've got to take over the right. Fantastic. So next step is to start mixing up a bit on purpose. So some to the left, some to the right, some that are low, some that are high. Okay? Ready, Josh? So I'm not going to make him actually have to run for the ball, but he might have to come forwards a little bit, and sometimes he's got to catch it high, sometimes he's got to catch it low. Oh! oh <laughs> sun came out <laughs> right in the eyes. Nice for the picture. Not so good for the catch. Come on, Cloud. Okay, fingers down, to fingers down, to fingers up. I wasn't sure, change my mind, plenty of time to change my mind. If it's going a long way to the side, you might not ever get two hands over there. So you might have to force your partner. There we go. If it's really wide, you might have to go to one hand, but one hand would be an absolute last resort. If you can catch it in two hands, oh, good catch. Catch it in, in two if you possibly can. So, hope those little practices have been useful. We're going to create a little bit of a game now. So we're going to set out a little area. Uh, one, two, one, two. Now, the, the bigger the area, the harder it will be for the catcher. So you could play around with this. Can we see that in the screen? Or was that too... Oh, let's have a look. Can you actually see the cones on the floor? I'm just going to angle it down a little bit. There we go. So I've made just a little bit of a square. And I'm going to make a square similar size for Josh. So we've been doing, we've been pretty cooperative in what we've done so far. We've been helping each other out. We're going to turn this into a little bit more of a competitive game. So I'm going to try and score points. I've got to stand in my square and I will get a point if I land it in Josh's square. So that was really sneaky, 1-0 to me. So you need to be ready. It's got to be underarm. Oh, 2-0. Oh, 2-1. Oh, got to be underarm, okay, so there's no point just whizzing it down, but you might put a high one up, it makes them have to think about it, you can start dumbing a little bit, you're looking for little short passes, I'm going to look for longer ones, a bit of variety, I might, if he's too far forward, then maybe, <laughs> can be a disaster with the table, oh, there's a space, there we go, got the score, I've got another ball here Josh, okay. But a little bit of variety, if he's, if he's too far back, oh. <laughs> if he's too far back, you can drop one short. If he's too far forward, you might be able to lob one over the top. But, oh, try and give, oh, too short, that wasn't in. Oh, victory is sweet. 
So, little practice. Now, if it turns out that you are much better than your partner, because you're not six years old, you know, you could make this, you could even this up vastly by making your square much bigger and their square much smaller. So you can play around with it and handicap it so that you can get a really good competitive little challenge going. So, next week, we're going to do some more fielding practices. We're going to look at dealing with a ball that's coming along the floor towards us. And we're looking with dealing with a ball that has gone past us and is on the floor. How we go and get that and get it back to where we want it. So we've dealt with some balls in the air coming towards us today, low and high. Remember about fingers, they're either pointing up or down and we're cradling whatever we catch. So I hope that was useful. Next week, you just need a ball again. Might need some cones or something to throw on the floor, we'll have a think about it. And then over the next couple of weeks, we'll look at some batting skills for rounders, stool ball, baseball, cricket, some batting skills, and we're going to look at some bowling skills. So hope you have a great day. Tomorrow, Tuesday, we've got circuit training, which would be fine if you're like from year, t year 10 to the age of 80. Uh, have a join in tomorrow at two o'clock and on Wednesday we do at two o'clock some little games and challenges for the little ones. Also today is the third week of our county, Lincolnshire County virtual uh, school games challenges. Uh, thank you for all those children that entered the Dancing on Isolation. Uh, I've been judging uh, the ones from Lincolnshire South East this morning. Thank you very much for those. That has now closed. We're halfway through primary school athletics. I showed you those challenges last Monday. You've still got all week to have a go at those and send in your scores. So please have a go at those, send those in this week. Starting from today, we've got our secondary school botcher competition, and it's just a really easy target throwing uh, skill. You're sat on a seat, you've got a target on the floor four metres away, and you throw something at the target and try and get it over a five metre line. There's a stopwatch running, just see how long it takes you to knock whatever object you've picked over a finish line. All those details are online. There's a video online to show you what it looks like. Have a go at that, ever so easy to do. Throw your entries in. There will be county finalists. There will be a county winner. So give it a go over this week if you are primary school age people. Thanks very much. Have a good week. Bye.